Dear Addison. It's Tuesday, July 10th. Wah, wah. Cleaning up some uh, dog food. We went together to this, this bookstore recently. I think we were buying a book for a party we were going to of yours, a, a kid's birthday party of a friend of yours. I'm looking for a book myself and ended up picking up this, this great book about Harold Ramis. He's most famous for being the Ghostbuster Egon on the Ghostbusters, but he's done a lot of stuff. He wrote and directed Caddyshack and a lot of zany screwball comedies, a lot of stuff with Bill Murray, and the guy's fantastic. And his daughter wrote a biography about him that just came out like a month ago. I think Harold died like a year ago or so. Really great perspective of a biography written by your own daughter. It's a great book. I highly recommend the read. But before I had bought it, I go in the bookstore. It's, you know, just kind of a jumbled mess, right? I mean, they've got a bookshelf, as, you, as you'd expect, of like new nonfiction, which is where I tend to go. And I see Harold Ramis, big fan, so I check this out. And it looks like something I would enjoy reading. Open up the cover, it's 30 bucks. Close the cover, put it back on the shelf, leave the store with you. Even I, a book lover, have a hard time spending 30 bucks on a new book when I know I can get the same hardcover book probably on Amazon for like 20 bucks or the Kindle version for about 15, 16 bucks. So I could save about $15 just by getting on Amazon. And even though I support this bookstore, what are bookstores gonna do? And this is an important lesson, I think, for you if you go into business. A couple days ago, there's a really great story about a bookstore called G. Haywood Hill Limited in London. The proprietor took over the store from his partners. The partners weren't really interested in making money. They just, you know, loved running a bookstore, but he really wanted to see a profit from this thing. So he bought out his partners and he started running this book, this bookstore. And he took it from, I think, where, where it was maybe losing money, and he like quadrupled its revenue. And now it's doing really well. He did the opposite opposite of what Amazon does. Amazon is the play at convenience. You can get, you know, any book you want. They're all half off probably what you can go buy it at a bookstore. The service is like, you know, eh. Most of the reviews are fake. What else are you getting? Stuff and it'll probably be delivered tomorrow or delivered this second if you own a Kindle. This proprietor of, of G. Haywood Hill Bookstore created a bespoke book shopping service in which when you go, you could even go do this on the website, when you go to the store, you get hooked up with a sales representative who interviews you. The interviewer might even have you send them pictures of your bookshelves and books you own. And this person crafts the experience of owning, getting books from them so well that you sign up for a subscription of like six books or a year of books is I think one of the more, their popular kind of services and they send you a new book every single month that's tailored specifically to you. A lot of book lovers are gonna love this kind of thing. This is a service, you can't get at a library, you can't get this at clearly the bookstore that I walked out of. It's, it's a great reminder about competition. You know, Amazon's got convenience really locked up. It's gonna be very hard to compete against Amazon. I mean, they're winning on convenience of, of, of getting this thing delivered to you quickly, cheaply, everything else. So you're going to have to compete on the other dimension, fidelity bespoke service experiences. And this G. Haywood Hill shows you a great example of exactly how to do it. That's it. I hope you like the business tidbits too. Maybe you don't even go into business. We'll see. Maybe you'll follow in the footsteps of me and your grandfather. Who knows? I'll see you tomorrow. Love, Dad.